today's video, we're going to look at some of the techniques involved in analysing noise and vibration data from rotating machines. First thing we'll do is load some data. In the DATS examples folder, we have a file here called Race Car Run Up, which we'll load in. Uh, which has a vibration signal here, which is obviously measured on the exhaust. It's also got some microphone data. If we look at the data, we can clearly see where this has been recorded from an engine that's been accelerated um, at low engine speeds, very little vibration, and as the engine accelerates, we can see the vibration levels rising. So, a typical kind of file we'd expect from um, an engine being accelerated. We'll just go in here and deselect all the signals except the one we want, which is the exhaust signal. And to start with, let's just do an ordinary frequency analysis. So we'll choose an auto spectral density. And we'll run that with the default parameters. And have a look at the result. And plainly as expected, it's not really going to tell us very much. There's various different frequency peaks down here. But we know that our engine's gone through a range of different frequencies as it's accelerated. So this type of analysis isn't going to tell us very much. So let's try something different. If we go to the FFT section, we have something called a hopping FFT. And if we go back to our original data and run the hopping FFT, again we'll just use the default parameters. And now we can see we have a very different type of result, um, not just a single curve this time. Um, what we actually have is a range of frequency spectra frequency along this axis, um, but time up here, so as time has increased we're taking FFTs from the data, basically taking a small section of the data and doing an FFT on it and then looking at those as time progresses. If we change the view slightly we go to an intensity plot and we just put that on a log scale so that will show us a bit more. Uh, now we can see here as the, as the engine accelerates frequency increasing on, on these lines here so we can now start to see uh, what's happening in the frequency domain as the engines accelerated. Uh, what is still missing from this though is we don't have any information regarding the speed of the engine so we can see perhaps an event that happens here but we, d we know what time that happened we don't know what um, speed the engine was, was going when that happened so in the next part of the tutorial we'll look at how we then relate all of this to speed. In the first part of this tutorial we looked at how we could take some vibration data that was recorded from a racing car engine as it was accelerated and how we could relate that to the frequency domain and we ended up with the using the hopping FFT analysis that we can see here, um, where we have frequency along here and, and time in the y direction. And we can see various phenomena that are occurring as the engine is accelerated. What was missing at this stage was any information about the speed of the engine. So now we'll look at how we can analyse the data to find out what's happening in the frequency domain, but relate that to speed rather than time. Now there are a number of ways of measuring the speed of the engine. We may be lucky enough to have a, a direct um, speed signal that gives us speed versus time. Uh, there are even techniques we can use where we don't have speed information. We can, can look at a um, user an analysis like this to actually generate the speed. But the most common way of doing this would be to use uh, a taco signal. If we get close this window down, go back to our original data and we'll just turn on another signal in here called TACO. And if we switch to, so we go back to this one, switch to the TACO signal, bring this window up. Now this is another time history recorded at the same, same time as the vibration and the noise data was recorded. Uh, but if we zoom in on this, zoom in on a small section, we can see we have a series of pulses here and what this represents is um, a taco signal so for every revolution of the engine there are a number of these pulses in our case it's it's two 
Now these the taco signals can be generated in, in various ways. You can use optical techniques or um, or maybe something connected to the electrical system of the car. Uh, but we're looking at the start of the signal here and if we look at the number of pulses we have a, a tenth of a second here between 0 0.5 and 0 0.6 seconds and we have 1, 2, 3, approximately 4 or 5 pulses. If we move further along the signal where we know the engine was moving much faster and we look at a similar similar section 4.7 to 4.8 tenth of a second we can now see we have many many more pulses so that obviously telling us the engine's rotating faster very revolution of the engine we're getting two of these pulses so this information can then be used to actually give us um, information about the speed of the engine as we move through time now the particular data we have here has already been analyzed before and there's now another there's a signal in here called taco speed which would have been generated as a result of, of one of the analyses. So if we look at that signal, what we now see is our same time period, the time period of the acceleration of the engine, which is um, nearly six seconds. But now what we have is a signal that tells us what the speed was at a particular time. So at two seconds we can see here it was roughly two and a half thousand RPM, etc. So we can see the engine accelerating in time. Now we have that information, we can now look at a, a different type of analysis from our hopping FFT, um, one called a waterfall. So if we just go back in here and turn our taco and speed signals off, because we don't need those, we're going back to look at our original exhaust signal, which is here, and we run the waterfall analysis. We need a quick check in here, the, the signal we've got the taco data in is called taco, it's two pulses per rev, and for our waterfall analysis we're saying we'd like to start at a thousand rpm go to six thousand rpm and we'd like a spectral line every fifty rpm so that's fine we'll use those parameters and we get a new graph now uh, which at first sight looks very similar to the hopping fft graph that we did previously we'll just turn all the lines on so we can see it um, but the significant difference with this graph is we still have frequency along the x-axis. Along the y-axis now we have speed in RPM and we can see the lines that were, were curved before are now straight so we can directly relate these lines to the rotation of the engine so as obviously as the engine speeds up then these harmonics get stronger. Again we can look at it here as an intensity plot, put it on a log scale, so we can see it clearer. And here we see these lines are very straight. Now these lines, these lines are harmonics. Are often, are more often known in rotating machinery as orders. And in this particular case, because we have a four-cylinder, four-stroke engine, uh, second order will normally be the dominant order. So this line here, this clearly the most um, dominant one, is the second order and we can actually turn on to show order lines which will then label these for us um, and here we see this is second order so that's how we analyse the speed and produce a, our, our new plot, our waterfall plot the next thing we will probably want to do would be to extract the order information so that we look at these particular things and we'll look at that in the next tutorial So at the end of part two, uh, we've finished our waterfall analysis and we've ended up, as we can see here, with our uh, frequency versus speed map, our waterfall plot, on which we've identified harmonics or the orders. Now what we're going to look at is how we can look at these orders in more detail. So we'll close this window down. We've got a waterfall here, so we'd now go to another analysis here, which will extract certain orders and we'll run that and what this particular one does is it, we give it a start order so we'll start from order 2 uh, because as mentioned before we're, we're interested in the even orders here it's a, a four cylinder four stroke engine we use an ordering increment of 2 and 4 orders so we're going to get 
2, 4, 6 and 8 and we'll also tell it to extract the overall level from the data as well. So we just OK that, we'll do the analysis and here's the result. We'll just pop that window up. Uh, it's only showing us one of the results at the moment so just switch on overlay, select them all. So there we have all of our orders and the overall level which represents the, the, the total noise, the total vibration in this case uh, coming from our, from our engine from the measurement we made on the exhaust um, and that's this top line here, the overall level and as we'd expect as the speed increases then the vibration increases. Uh, we could quickly add a legend to that just so we can be sure we know which order is which. And we will just draw our overall level with a nice bold line so that one stands out. So we can see um, lower down in the in the speed range this blue line which is second order pretty much makes up the entire noise. It's almost as high as the overall level so it's it's nothing much else is contributing. It's all second order or second harmonic noise. Uh, further higher up the speed range here we can see the red line which is sixth order actually peaks for a while and down here we've got a very high peak um, the green line which is fourth order. Now why are we interested in in orders um, many reasons. I mean, what we're looking at here is a, an automotive application. It's a, a, an engine, um, so these orders are really going to give us a, an idea of what the what's making up the noise that or vibration from the from the engine. Some things are desirable, some are not. So we may be looking to reduce some or increase others. Um, typical application of this: it may be we want a particular car to sound sporty so certain orders we know will make it sound sporty so we tune the exhaust and then we can measure and see if we're getting the results that we want. In other applications it may be that certain orders are undesirable that we know that a particular order will um, cause cause damage so we look to, to do things in the design process to, to, to reduce those and we can measure them measure them here. So that's really how we um, extract the orders and what we can then do with them. That pretty much wraps up what we're going to look at in these videos. We're only only doing a simple overview of rotating machinery analysis. We we can go on from this stage to do much more complicated things. For instance, if we if we have a good quality taco signal, say from a from an encoder, we can start to look at phenomena like uh, torsional vibration, the, the or sometimes called jitter, um, just and, and look at what's happening. Um, around the rotation of the engine at, at different speeds. If we have multiple taco signals at different points um, in a drivetrain, we can look at phenomena like twist and see how, how things are varying over, over time. Uh, we can also, if we're, if we're interested in, in orders that we've just looked at, we, there are analyses we can do so that instead of looking at things in the frequency domain, we actually turn them into the order domain. But those are all issues really for, um, for another day and another tutorial. So now we'll finish.